for God's Word. Pastor Franklin, the resident pastor of Kodesh Family Church Atlanta, comes your way with this refreshing and inspiring word that will motivate you to do your best for God. Join Pastor Franklin now as he ministers the Word of God. us back to himself through Christ. Do you also believe that? That being saved is a gift. There's nothing you've done to earn it. Okay. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. If you believe the first one, that when you came to Christ, you're a new person. And that it is a gift from God then you should also believe that God has given you a task of reconciling people to him. That because of your salvation, he has given you a task to reconcile people to him. Have you tried to reconcile friends who are fighting before? Or you are the instigator of the fight? family members, you have to go in and reconcile them for five hours. Amen. So, I like the way the NLT puts it. It says that and all this is a gift from God who has brought us back to himself through Christ and God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. You have a task, and I have a task. Because God has reconciled us to himself, everybody has a task. If you believe you are saved, then there is a task. You may not have started the task, but it doesn't change the fact that the task has been given. They may give you a task, homework. You may not do it, but it doesn't change the fact that that one is going to count in your assessment. At the end of the semester, they pull up everything and say that 15% is coming from this task. And if you don't have anything, it is zero. That's what I will say. But you know, I was carrying your books every day to bring to class. So consider, no. We all have a task. Verse 19 says that one. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So the day you became born again, 
The day you were saved is the day you were given a task to reconcile people to God. There must be somebody that you can point to or somebody that points to you and say that you brought me to Christ. Or somebody that can say that because of something you did, I came to Christ. I mean, that's how I understand reconciling people to God. Bringing the people who were away from God back to God. And it's a task that everybody has. It's different from Microsoft Cloud. Yeah. It's different from pharmacy. It's different from teaching at the university. It's different from IT. It's different from data. It's different from accounting. It's different from uh, the health industry. But it is still a task. And you have it. Amen. So how are you going to fulfill the task? Go back to 18 and in the King James. I like how he puts this one in the King James. He says that then he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. You can go back to my NLT for today. To fulfill the task of reconciling people to God, you must be in the ministry. You must serve God in the ministry. If you are going to reconcile people to him. And there are two types of ministry. The first one, which most people know, is full-time. A full-time minister is someone who has left everything and decided that I am just going to concentrate on the ministry of reconciling people to God. And that is the one that many of us will not do. Many people, the fact is, we will never leave our secular jobs and just do ministry full time. It's a fact. The other type of ministry, which is often less known, is the lay ministry. The lay ministry is a person who maintains the, the secular job but still serves in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keeps Fortune 500 or whatever job you are doing, but still has the ministry and is reconciling people to God. It's not very common. It's not very known because you, you need to be intentional about the lay ministry if you are going to serve God. You need to be, first of all, conscious that you have a task of reconciling people to God. And probably your best chance to fulfill that task is the lay ministry. Because it's easier for somebody in full-time ministry to do this task of reconciling people to God because that is all that he does. He wakes up, he's, that is what he does. So it's easier. There, there is nothing that is competing. But if you are not in full-time, there are many things that are competing for your time. And the best way to serve God or fulfill the task that he was given to you the day you became born again is to be in the lay ministry. To still become the pharmacist. But you have a ministry that you are serving God through. And you need to be intentional because you can be in church. You can be a good church person. 
a very principled Christian, but you would never fulfill the task that was given to you because you you are not conscious that it is a task that you have. There is nothing wrong with you. You are a nice person. You give good offerings. You are very principled. You have your quiet time. But you may not fulfill the task because you are not conscious that in addition to being a Christian, God has given me a task to reconcile people to himself. That is why the lay ministry is important. Keep your circular job and serve God as a lay person. And even today, the lay ministry, the concept of lay, is all over the world. People are using it outside of the church. But you may not be conscious that this is a lay principle that is at work. Let me give you two. We have people now who are called lay stock. If somebody works in the stock exchange, is he a stock broker? Brokerage, right? We have people now who are lay stock brokers. The, The word lay comes from the Greek word lykos. It means not having skill or not having formal training in an area, yet you are working in, a, in, a, in the area. You are not formally trained. You have no certificate, which shows that this is your qualification, this is your profession, but you are working there. You are lay. And we have people like that. They use their popularity to tweet, and it affects stocks. All they need to do is to say something before you see that stock market is moving in the direction that they want you to move. No formal training. What, what do you have to learn to, to do stock? Do finance in church. <laughs> do finance in school. Go to trading school. Trading school. They have no formal training. No certificate. But they affect the stock exchange. We have lay marketers. No certificate in marketing. No CMA, Chartered CIM, Chartered Institute of Marketing. No certificate. But they are fully into marketing. Companies go to them because they are popular. Yes, an influencer is a lay person in marketing. They may have their profession, let's say he's into sports, but he's doing marketing as lay. All he has to do is a company comes and says, Look, we, we, we have this nice watch. We want to grow the, that business. He just needs to go on a talk show, wear the watch, sit there, and do something like this. He doesn't even mention the watch. Because the people are buying it. That is the job of people who went to school to do marketing. To come up with strategies on how to market a product. And how to push it. And today you have people who have no business in marketing. Doing that job. As lay people. Lay surveyor. And what do they also do? Yeah. And it's leading to a lot of growth in economics, finance, for, for these companies. In any area of life, the lay concept is the engine of growth. And in God to lay is the key to church growth. 
sending many churches all over the world. The key is the lay. People who are not formally trained as pastors just rising to pastor churches. That is how the Methodist church overtook the Anglican church. Because the Anglican church was the established church. And then, what's his name? John Wesley came. In the Anglican church, you need to go to theology school, study different things, different doctrines before you become a pastor. And John Wesley said that, do you have the call? Do you have the conviction that God wants to use you? Okay. Do you have a Bible? Do you have a horse? Because those days there weren't cars. You need to travel to the church. If you have these three things, he ordains you. Here yeah, you can you can preach. Start the church. And nobody can say that the Methodist church hasn't worked. It has worked. They are in many nations because of the concept of lay. People in the church rising up and serving God at a higher level. That's all. And we need more lay people. Yes. Do your secular job. Like me. I don't have, I didn't go to theology school. I didn't study theology for four years. I have no certificate. So, if, if this was Rwanda, maybe I cannot preach because now Kagami has come up with these policies. You need to go to theology school before you, you pastor a church. I wouldn't qualify to preach in Rwanda. But I am preaching here without certificate. Hopefully it's working. <laughs> Amen. Because the lay is the engine for growth. Anywhere. People rising up and doing things where they are not formally qualified. There are many examples in history. What's the best form of government? Democracy. Democracy came about because there were people who were trained and they were in government. And the people, ordinary people, without training, rose up and said, that, No, we want to form a government where we are all ruling together. And it has changed the world. But it started from lay people. Not the nobles, not the people who have gone to school to study how to be in government. It was ordinary people, farmers, tailors, seamstresses, uh, cattle rearers. They came together and said that we need to change the system and we need to form a government where everybody is part of the government and it is for the people and by the people. And they changed the world. Lay people can do a lot for God. Amen. You can be a lay minister. You should consider to be a lay minister. Because that's why I read it in the NLT. It makes it simple. Verse 17. No, oh no, the verse 18. It says that, and all this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to himself. You have a task. We can put our head in the sand and pretend as if the task is not there. But on the day of the assessment, that, that portion will count. Like sometimes they say, as part of the grade, 5% is for people who are active in class. And you, because you are, because you are, you, you are brainy, you think everybody in class is down, and you don't talk in class, you are quiet. The highest you can get is 95. Because the teacher says you are not active in class. 
you don't talk, you don't ask questions, you don't contribute. So, if you can get everything correct, your highest mark is 95. You will not get that 5%. Or they give homework. They say homework carries 30% of the grade. And you never did your homework. The highest you could get is 70%. And there is a task. If I say that every task will come with an assessment, is it a true statement? There must be a way to evaluate whether the task has been done. Otherwise, it is not a task. I mean, when you give a task to your children to do, don't you inspect it and say that you didn't do it well, or you did it well, or I won't do it this way. Or clean up. <laughs> that year <I> was like, <laughs> clean up better. You assess every task. And if God says that I have given you a task of reconciling people to himself or to myself, then that is a task that will be assessed. And you should work on passing that one. And I'm saying that the best chance we have as people working in the circular field to really fulfilling the task is to be laid. Yeah. Be a lay minister. Anything you want to do in this life is hard. So when I say be a lay minister, you think it's hard. But truly, anything you try to do is hard. There's nothing that you do that is easy. Try becoming a chartered accountant. Or even try doing your normal 8 to 5 work. You see, that is a hard job. There are days you sit down and you start working, you forget that you have not eaten. You only realize because it's 5 p.m. when you're about to go. They say, hey, I didn't eat today. Where did the time go? There are days you sit down to work. When you get up, you are more tired than than somebody who was working at a construction field. Like, your back, everything is... But you didn't go anywhere. You were just sitting in a comfortable chair, air-conditioned room, typing. The sun is not beating you. But still, you are tired. Because work is tiring. Yeah. You will be tired. The only question is, what is making you tired? Everything will make you tired. Whether you want to take on some tiredness for God, that is an issue. But there is no escape from being tired. There is no escape from having a busy life. Matthew 16 verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross and follow me. What Jesus is saying is, you are a selfish Christian unless you've taken up your cross. Without taking up the cross, you are a selfish person. The cross is the symbol of Christianity. The cross signifies sacrifice. Today, a lot of people wear a cross as jewelry. But that's not the cross. The cross means sacrifice. To Jesus, the cross was a place of death. It was a place where he gave up everything. And he says, I take up your cross too. That is a sacrifice that you must make. If you must fulfill the task of reconciling people to God, 
it will come with sacrifice. There are two things that you need to be a lay minister. Number one is sacrifice. To embrace sacrifice. To accept sacrifice. Second Timothy 2 verse 3 to 5. says that endure hardness as a soldier of Christ. Second Timothy 2 3 to 5. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. This was Paul talking to Timothy as he was entering the ministry. So then in the ministry, you must endure hardness. You endure hardness for other things anyway. Oh, you are. You are enduring hardness in other ways. Sleepless nights. Even with remote, you can't even stop working at five. Eight o'clock, you are still sitting down. You are enduring hardness for corporate America. Yeah. As for the hardness, you would endure it. The question is, where are you enduring the hardness? You are enduring hardness for your degree. If you are like somebody like Sharon, studying, trying to pass the exam. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, you may be studying. You endure hardness anyway. And the Bible says that, endure hardness as a soldier of Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. It means that when you choose to be a soldier of Christ, You need to untangle yourself from the world in a little bit so that you can be a soldier. That is all it takes to do the lay. Sacrifice. You must sacrifice something. Because you are sacrificing anyway. Think oh, the ministry is going to take your time. Just check your life. Corporate America is taking all your time. Anyway, it's taking your time. Your children's schedule is taking your time anyway. It says that where do you choose to put your time? There is nobody that serves God that has 25 hours a day. You must take the hours from somewhere. If you think that, oh, because you serve God, God should do something so that as for you, you have extra time to be able to do everything. No. It gives you the same hours. And you need to take it from somewhere and give it to God. That is the only way to serve God. To have sacrifice. Amen. You take it from your free time. You steal a little here and use it for God. You give up some time. But that sacrifice, it must come if you are going to serve God. If you are going to fulfill the task of reconciling people to God, you, you must take the time from somewhere. And you may think you don't have time, but it's not true. Haven't you realized that there was a time you thought you didn't have time to serve God, but something came up and you managed to make time for it? Yeah. It's, it's more of priority. What you think is a higher priority. I can give you a clear example. You may be in a place where I don't have time to even do evangelism. But I tell you, when your child says that, as part of the curriculum, every Saturday, 9 to 12, I need to be doing this. You, the same person, you find the time. It's priority. And sacrifice. Where are you taking this? What are you taking the time from to give to God? Then a lay person also needs wisdom. Matthew 10, verse 16. Matthew 10, verse 16. Say, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 
When you are sent, you need wisdom. Why? Because the world is not designed for sent people, people that God sends. The world will not give you anything. And you need wisdom to be able to do what you need to do. How to do the lay ministry and it doesn't affect your secular job. You cannot say because I serve God, I can slack in my work and then God will step in and they will fire me. They will fire you. Oh, you'll be fired. You need wisdom to balance the two. Wisdom to know what is priority now. What could be pushed back. With wisdom and sacrifice, everybody can enter into the lay ministry. Because the work of the pastor or the work to reconcile people to God, there are four things. Number one, is a great commission. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. That is the main task of reconciling people to God. Bringing people to God. A lay pastor, a lay person can win souls. It is not the preserve of a full-time person who wins souls. Talking to people about Christ, it doesn't have to be a full-time pastor. You can be lay, but you are working to fulfill the great commission. Amen. I mean, there is nothing in this scripture that says that the person who does it has to be full-time. It's all our sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice something for God? Because the task has been given. The next two job or requirements of the task, you know the way they put that job advert in uh, LinkedIn. The task requirements. The first one is fulfilling the great commission. The next one, number two, is prayer. And number three is ministering the word or teaching. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 4. So in those days, when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a memory of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called a multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer, and to the ministry of the word. That is the second and the third requirement if you are going to reconcile people to God. To pray. Can you pray? That's all. Not just pray for your needs. When you take on the lay, instead of just praying for your needs, you just need to make time and pray a bit more for reconciling people to God. Do you already pray? Can you pray? Do you know how to pray? Then you can be a lay minister. I said, there is nothing about the requirement that shows that it has to be somebody who is working full time. Just your normal prayer period. Can you extend it a bit and pray for church? Pray for souls. Pray for salvation of souls. Pray for the city of Atlanta. That people will be saved. The whole idea that we cannot be ministers is not based on evidence or real truth. Because when you look at the job, can you talk to people about Christ? So if Ezan 
meets a lady and he doesn't know how to talk to her. You know, every time he goes around a lady, he can't open his mouth. I'm sure there is something you can tell him to help him to be able to speak to the lady. What just happened is you have taught him. So we are already teaching people. But the question is, can you teach somebody else? Can you teach Bible study? Take John 3, 16 and teach somebody, for God so loved the world. This is what it means, that God loves you. And can you be taught? Because you must be taught to, to preach. You've been taught accounting. Some of us learned very big books, engineering books. We committed all to memory and we passed. But when we take the Bible, it's like we cannot learn it. it it's not true. It's just your priority. Right now, if you want to do the next certification in your area, you will take a book and learn. So, praying and ministry, which is teaching the word. A lot of us know how to teach people how to do bad things. And we've been taught how to do bad things. And we've got the instruction fully, and we have become experts. And the last requirement, Jeremiah 23, verse 2. Jeremiah 23, verse 2. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. So, what does he have against them? You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. So, he said that these things you are not doing, you are supposed to be doing. You are supposed to be visiting the people. It's a requirement. It's part of reconciling people to God. Can you visit people? You are visiting people anyway. All the things you need to do for God, you are already doing it anyway. You visit people anyway. But God is saying that can you step up into the lane and maybe take on the responsibility of visiting people. Because visiting people is a care for the sheep. There are many people who have never been visited by a pastor before. Forget a pastor. There are many people who don't have people who visit them. But when they enter their home, that is it. Many people are lonely. Can you go to somebody and visit? Oh, I just passed by to visit you. How are you doing? And encourage the person with a scripture. That is all it takes to be in the ministry. You don't need theology. You don't need certification. You don't need all the things that make us afraid. There are only four requirements. Prayer, teaching, visiting, and we call it interaction. PV. Yeah, counseling is like teaching the people. Amen. It doesn't take a lot. It's a deception that you cannot become a lay minister. It's a deception. The only thing is, are you willing, of all the sacrifices you are making in other places, are you willing to make an additional sacrifice for God or reduce some of the sacrifices so that you can sacrifice for God? You know how to gather people. How to channel an idea. Sorry, I hope you will not be offended, but let me use you, Nick. You can marshal a whole body of health professionals who have not thought of going to Africa and convince them, and they follow you to Africa, and you do great work. I saw some surgeries that were being done. Fantastic. But that skill which is serving other things, can it also serve God a bit? That is what it takes to become a lay minister. I never had formal training. I haven't been to theology. I'm 
never taken 101 of anything in theology. But do you have a Bible? Can you explain? You know, when you start to work on God, let me end on this one. A lot of people don't do it because they are wondering, hey, if I teach, it has to be some powerful teaching. No, it does not have to be powerful. It is not a requirement for the ministry that you would teach powerfully or excellently. It's not a requirement for the ministry. The requirement for ministry is faithfulness. God prefers faithfulness to excellent speaking abilities. Yeah. Your faithfulness is more important. That is why the Bible says that there is a great cloud of witnesses. What are they watching? They are watching to see if you are faithful to the end. Last week, the Reverend Gabby was teaching the same scripture. They are watching to see your faithfulness. The Bible says that, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You don't need a lot of skill. Like, oh, as for you, you can speak well. No, you don't need it. You may use it in outside of the church but your faithfulness will be required can you be faithful you can teach great but you keep doing as you keep working for God that skill improves because the Holy Spirit helps you you know I am far from being a great preacher but it's easier to preach now than when Reverend Patrick left and I took over. Yeah. It improves. The Holy Spirit helps you. If God was looking for excellency, then we won't be preachers. By looking for somebody who can be faithful in the call to be teaching, can you do that? If you can teach somebody, if you can convince another person to leave their parents and follow you into your house, Even though you didn't have anything, then and believe in you that David that he uh, in the future one day is going to get well with this guy. Today he doesn't have anything, but one day is going to get well. You were convinced. <laughs> Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm ending. God has given you a task. It's either you accept the task and find out how to fulfill the task. Or you bury your head in the sand as if there's no task. But it's going to count anyway. And you can be a good lay minister. Because that will help God to act to do more. There will be more churches all over. You can be a great lay minister. You can teach. You can preach. You can visit people. You can counsel people. That is all it takes. Amen. And put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for, for today, for your word, which encourages us to rise and serve you at a higher level and to become lay ministers, people working for you, even though we are also working in the secular world, 
than just fulfilling the task that you have given us to reconcile people to yourself. light to see how easy it is to step up and serve you. We are grateful that you always give us an opportunity. Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to get to know him. The Bible says that you must believe in your heart that God sent Jesus for you. And then you must confess him as your Lord and your Savior. And you will be saved. Two requirements. Believe and then confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we are just going to pray. And if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray with all genuineness and you will be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I accept the free gift of salvation which came through Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day I belong to you. Teach me to live and walk as a child of God. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen. If you give your life to Jesus, there is a number coming up on the screen. Call, text that number. Someone will respond. We also would like to give you a free book. A book that you can, it will help you in your new faith. Amen. So just reach out and it will be sent to you freely. You don't have to pay for any. God bless you for listening to this message. Subscribe to Kodesh Atlanta on Facebook and YouTube or reach out to us by calling or texting the number plus one four seven zero three seven seven two nine six three for more information and upcoming events. Thank you and stay blessed.